Welcome to your Sunday edition of Wasatch Weekends. We've got a great show in store for you. We're going to introduce you to Welp, a great company founded by an outdoor enthusiast who's going to share his love of snowboarding and surfing and how he's expand, expanding his repertoire of outdoor activities through his company, as well as introduce you to elephant welfare and why it's so important that we take such great care of the elephants and so much more here on your Sunday edition of Wasatch Weekends. But don't forget that Park Silly is taking place for you to get out there and enjoy. So let's take a look at that local weather forecast right now. There's a great company brought to you by an outdoor enthusiast, and the company's name is Welp, and it's got a great story on why it's named that, so let's hear what he has to say. Are you an outdoor enthusiast? Well, then there's a company that will help you share your story, and that's Welp, and we're joined by the founder, Curtis Jackson. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Now, Welp is a great brand that you have personally created to help people tell their stories. And I was going through your website yesterday and there are some incredible stories on there. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, um, it was one of those things where I was just trying to make a way for a tangible product and a digital media to be able to overlap. A lot of those run separately. And I figured telling stories of the people that not only inspire me, but just uh, I'm around throughout the winter and summer was a nice way to do it. So people can go online, they can shop the product. You've got one of the products on right now, but then they can see these stories. And these are incredible athletes from around the world who aren't professional athletes. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it was one of those things that I wanted to tell more common stories. Um, a lot of the people I've worked with in both in retail um, at Powder Tools shop here in Steamboat over the years um, don't get the notoriety or maybe the attention I think they deserve. So. I wanted to tell maybe some more relatable stories that um, your uh, average person could uh, relate to. Which is such a great way to kind of encompass the industry that is the snowboard and ski industry, but you go beyond that. You do surfing and mountain biking now too. Yeah, surfing, uh, mountain biking, skateboarding, uh, skiing, there's more on the way. Um, I started with snowboarding and surfing just because those are two things very near and dear to my heart and I know them th the best. But, um, you know, I understand that I have friends that absolutely are absolute diehards with mountain biking, um, skateboarding and, and uh, skiing as well. And so I want to inc incorporate those. And so if someone buys some of the Welp product and then they've got a great story to share and a great video and pictures to go along with it, is that something that you guys are interested in receiving from the clients? You know, I'd be open to that. Um, I'm always interested in, I meet new people all the time. I just touch base with someone who I have not actually filmed with before, but I've, I've known him in town here in Steamboat for a number of years. And, and I just asked him uh, about two days ago if he would want to go out and do uh, be that the, the skateboarder in one of the uh, skateboard products and he was excited about it and so we're gonna set that up for I believe tomorrow or the next day and go out and and um, make a nice uh, short film that's incredible and it's so nice that people have this opportunity to really share their love of the outdoor industry because being in the mountains is one of the best places to be but then you have the beach, you have the skateboarding element as you were creating this what was it like to go through the process of finding all of these different elements to make the company what it is today? You know, that has been uh, a, an interesting process. It, it's, um, there has been times when I've wanted to do more activities. I've wanted to tap into um, 
you know, things like skiing and mountain biking that I'm not as proficient in, but I still enjoy. Um, but they're just kind of trusting my gut. There wasn't really a good time. It felt initially, but as things kind of evolved, I've, I've suddenly just gotten to a point where I'm like, it just feels like it's a time to open it up to more disciplines and more people. And, um, yeah, it's been fun to uh, kind of learn as I go on that process for sure. And then if people are interested in buying the merchandise and hearing more of the story, what's the best way for them to get their hands on some of the products and to see all of the great media that you've created for the product? Uh, you can always follow uh, Welp LTD on Instagram or uh, Google Welp LTD for YouTube as well. Um, if you go to my website, which is www.welp.ltd, um, you can actually explore some of the videos, some of the stories. You can kind of see the messaging and the purpose behind what we do. And I do have a, about three or four friends of mine that help me with that process um, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, that They're all interested in those different videos as well. And um, But yeah, hitting up any of those uh, social platforms or the YouTube uh, would be the best place to start. And then what's the WELP mission statement? Because as I was going through the website yesterday, there's so many incredible stories told and there's so many great quotes from you, the founder. So what would you say the direct mission statement is for Wealth LTD? Ooh, good question. Um, if I were to summarize it, um, it's, it's, it's an, a creative outlet to bottleneck, uh, bottleneck creative ideas um, to who various individuals, um, and originally it was for nothing but a creative outlet. Um, but it's one of those things that I originally started for a friend of mine who uh, uh, who has passed away. Um, she had a, um, uh, a pretty severe version of cancer. And uh, so it was to raise money um, on behalf of her. And then um, that has kind of been one of those uh, sides of it that I, I don't really uh, uh, publicize that a ton. But I will say that that is a part of what I want to do is be able to help people um, with those situations because... Uh, you know, to be grateful for what some of us can do and, and some people cannot. It's always incredible to hear companies starting out by giving back. Now, where did you come up with the name Welp? I actually got to give credit to two of my friends, um, uh, my friends Robbie and Tyler, who they are um, uh, on the website uh, listed as, as, as helpful creators on there. And um, it was something that we... When I, when I was living, going to college in San Diego, uh, I would go visit them up in Newport Beach. And there was just this, um, there's this moment before you do something, right? Um, the Welp, originally the tagline was to be the moment before. And it was just to encourage that courageous moment before you do something. And we would go out and sometimes the ocean looks a little intimidating. Sometimes the mountain looks a little intimidating. And then there's just this Welp moment that you just choose to dive in or you choose to go home and, and then come back another day. And so that's, um, that's where the, the name came from. What an incredible start to an incredible company. Curtis, thank you so much for giving us all this great information, taking the time to chat with us. And one more time, what is the website so people can get their hands on the incredible merchandise? www.welp.ltd, no.com. But uh, <laughs> I appreciate the time, Maddie. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time and sharing us, sharing with us the more vulnerable side of the story of Welp. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Make sure that you check out Welp LTD and you see the incredible stories that take place on the website. That way you can get inspired to get outside and maybe have one of those Welp moments yourself. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we've got more of the show, so stay tuned. We had a chance to chat with the International Foundation of Animal Welfare and why it's so important to take care of our elephants because they are such magnificent beasts. So let's hear what they have to say. The International Fund for Animal Welfare is on a mission to protect animals all over. Uh, and joining us this morning, we have the president and CEO, CEO of IFAL. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning, Azadine Downs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. I hope you are too. Thank you. So can you give us a little bit of background on IFAL and what, what's going on there with you guys? Sure. IFAL is one of the largest and most respected animal welfare and conservation organizations in the world today. 
So we're a global nonprofit helping animals and people thrive together in more than 40 countries around the world. And we help rescue, rehabilitate, and release animals and restore as well as protect their natural habitats. So the link between animals and climate change is quite simple. The reason we have this beautiful planet is because we have such rich biodiversity. And so all the plants and animals are critical to our own health. And if you think about it this way, just like us humans, the planet has an immune system. When that immune system is not working, carbon builds up in the atmosphere, and that's why we see dangerous climate change. So wildlife keeps the soil rich and maintains the health of everything from wild grasses, the forests, the oceans, and the fresh air. Love that, love that. And, and people interested in saving the planet, right? Uh, it sounds like you can start by saving elephants, is that right? Yeah, so that's quite amazing, uh, because elephants are the gardeners of the landscape. And actually, when they thrive, we survive. Elephants move through the landscape and they fertilize it as they go. They spread seeds and they use their tusks to dig water holes. Important point, humans are not separate and apart from nature. We're part of nature and we need all the parts to function if we are to mitigate climate change. Awesome, and can you tell us a little bit about the new approach called Room to Roam with the elephants? Sure, Room to Roam is a large scale initiative from IFA that spans Eastern and Southern Africa. It's an ambitious vision as well as an urgent one. So Room to Roam is designed to create wildlife corridors that connect 12 critical elephant habitats. It's urgent because if we don't act now, the land will be lost to development. If elephants are forced to stay in one place, then the environment does not remain healthy. And since elephants move across landscapes where people live, we have to take serious steps to help the people that live with the wildlife. Our goal is for animals and people to thrive together on this planet that we call home. Awesome, awesome. And I know it can be a lot of doom and gloom with these animals, a lot of sad stories, but there's hope, right? Can you tell us, as the head of IFAL, what, what that hope is for these animals? Absolutely. I don't believe that we've passed the tipping point, so that's why I say there is hope. Nature will bounce back, but only if we let it. So during the pandemic, we all witnessed how quickly nature begins to heal itself. I think everyone saw all the videos of the animals coming back into the cities. They thrived because it was quiet. And I also have great faith in the younger generations who have great respect for the environment. They understand that when the environment suffers, people suffer. And I know that the news is always bad sometimes, but don't, don't give up hope. There's things that you can do. I love that. I love that. And speaking of which, uh, the legendary Jane Goodall wrote the foreword for your book. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your relationship? Sure. So Jane Goodall and I have been friends for many, many years, and she wrote uh, the foreword to my book, but mostly because she loves donkeys, and there's a lot of donkey stories in, in the book. Uh, she has a great sense of humor, everyone should know. She also celebrated her 90th birthday this year, and she really remains a beacon of hope uh, herself for so many people. She asked me to join her Council for Hope so that I could help spread the message that we mustn't give up this sense of hope that we've been talking about. Amazing, amazing. Thanks so much for joining us. More information at ifaw.org. That's I-F-A-W dot org. Uh, pleasure chatting with you this morning and, and keep up the good fight out there. Thanks so much. Appreciate hey. it. Are you daydreaming of a perfect vacation and you don't know where to go? Well, we're, then we're going to inspire you to maybe make your way to St. Kitts with this very dreamy vacation. Let's take a look. If you're like me, it is time to go on vacation after a long winter. Joining us now is Tommy Thompson with the St. Kitts Tourism Authority uh, down in the Caribbean. Tommy, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here and good morning. Yeah, so uh, after a long cold winter, a nice beach or a summer destination sounds lovely. Uh, can you tell us what people should be thinking about uh, when considering St. Kitts on their travel plans? Well, when you want a uh, summer vacation, it's got to be St. Kitts, St. Kitts, St. Kitts. As you walk down the stairs of the aircraft, you are stunned by the beauty of the island. On one hand, you've got the mountains, the other side, you've got the ocean. And in you know, a couple of minutes, you just feel very, very relaxed and at home. So we've got one of the, actually the only rainforest that's actually expanding in the world. And so you've got the opportunity to go and hike up Mount Liamiga, which is our version of a mountain. And it's 3,000 feet up, and you can go actually go down into the crater, which is a dormant volcano. And you know, within the rainforest, you can actually do some ATVing and some zip lining. 
A great way to get acquainted with the island is to take a tour either by a taxi or by our scenic railway and look at like one of the only railways in the English speaking Caribbean that's still fully operational. It's a great way to get your bearings and get a feel for the island uh, for the destination. Love that tip. What a great idea. And um, it looks beautiful down there. And obviously the nature is beautiful there, but there's also some music and some cultural happenings. Can you tell us a little bit about what's on the schedule this summer? Yes, we've got what we call the Summer of Fun. And it kicks off on the 27th of June with the St. Kitts Music Festival. It's a three night festival with all genres of music. It starts around about 7 p.m. in the evening and can go through to like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So it's really a, an endurance event. But you have great music and you got the opportunity to have um, great food, great drinks while you're there at the music festival while enjoying the music. And then that's followed by the Nevis Mango Festival. Uh, Nevis has 44 different varieties of mango. So all dishes and drinks are, are mango inspired. And then we've got the St. Kitts and Nevis uh, Restaurant Week. And this year, the uh, product that we're using is papaya. And we're really, really excited about this because we're really gonna see what the chefs are gonna do and create with papaya. And uh, during restaurant, we, we also have what we call the St. Kitts Grill Fest. And that's where we bring the local grillers together to compete against each other. And they have the, the choices of either chicken or pork or fish. And this year we've introduced lobster. And then that's followed by the Nevis Culture Rama. And it's going to be 50 years of this. And that's their version of Carnival. And then that's uh, followed up at the end of summer with uh, CPL Cricket. And then one of the last things that we do uh, between December and January is what we've called uh, Sugar Mask Carnival, which is the kids' version of Carnival. And we like to say we're the only carnival that goes from two, over two years. So from <laughs> January, December to January, it's two year, two year carnival. Come join us. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And then there's also some history going on there. Can you tell us a little bit about those offerings? Yes, um, St. Kitts, I know we've uh, been changed hands between the British and the French. So there's a fort that was actually built by the British. It's a World Heritage Site fort called uh, Brimstone Hill. And, you know, it was constructed by the British to defend it against the French. But it's also great uh, tour guides who are, who are there who can take you around the fort and then give you a history of the fort and also of the island. And the view is so spectacular. You get to see Stacia and Sabre, two of the Dutch um, countries. Um, and it's just amazing the uh, breathtaking the view that you've got there. Awesome. And, and so for St. Kitts, would you recommend a weekend trip, a week long trip? If I could take a year off and come, what's your recommendation on, on checking out St. Kitts? I, I think in coming from your area, you got to do at least a week. So you come and you get acclimatized and then, you know, you call it hanging out in, in the United States. You call it liming. So you get to bust a lime with the locals. And so, you know, there are lots of food options as well. So you can try the local uh, Catitian national dish, which is the stew fish, uh, along with stew salt fish, along with the coconut dumplings, the breadfruit and the plantain. But if you, you know, want a five-star meal, then you can go like to Park Hive and do an eight-course meal there. But in between, you can go to the fish shops like Omari and get some of the local uh, fried fish with uh, boiled green bananas and plantain. And then we've got an area called the Strip. Uh, with like eight or nine bars and restaurants so you can go bar hopping so you can go lime with the locals and you know just taking it all in i love it i love it if you're down there keep an eye out for tommy tommy where can people go for more information in this full schedule of what's coming this summer so you go to our website at visitsaintkids.com and you've got all the information about the activities about the hotels about the flights and, you know, it's just one of the web, our great websites that we keep um, updated. So it's very current information and it just entices you to come and visit us and think it. Uh, it sounds so wonderful. If anyone's looking for a plus one, let me know. I'd be happy to join you on that trip. Tommy, yeah. thanks so much for joining us this, this morning. Have a great summer down in St. Kitts. And uh, we look forward to a possible vacation down there this summer.
am now inspired to take a beautiful vacation to St. Kitts, and I hope that you are as well. We want to thank you so much for tuning into your Sunday edition of Wasatch Weekends. We love getting to be here to bring you all of this wonderful information. I don't know about you, but I'm going to start living my life with that whelp mentality, so make sure that you buy some of that great apparel. We'll see you tomorrow morning for your Monday edition of Wasatch Weekends.